Hey, greetings YouTube. Performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. In this case, we're going to break this down today and fix up this old Royal. Okay folks, we're going to put this thing back together finally. And I say finally because it's been sitting on my bench for like a week and it's given me more problems than any vacuum that I can remember in recent history. And this is a pretty simple vacuum so it shouldn't have given me any problems. So the first thing I did was I went and lost two of the spacers around the field. So I'm going to, you know, I'm only human. I lost those two spacers that go right here. And there's two more that go below. So I thought, oh, there's only two. Um, and I looked all over my shop. I cannot find them. I don't know where they went. So upon doing that, what I did was I crushed the uh, carbon brush holders, which was a big no-no because then the carbon brushes wouldn't move freely. So then my carbon brushes wouldn't move freely in and out. You know, so they move in and out freely now. So the solution ended up being, and maybe I'll put a picture up, um, is I ended up having to machine something the same size as the carbon brush on my milling machine, uh, take the, the uh, brass part out of here, out of the Bakelite, bend it with a hammer, get it right back to the right size, uh, and then reinsert that. Now that whole process took about two hours uh, after the manual machining and stuff like that. Um, so that, that was a hassle that you shouldn't have to do, and I want to make sure you don't have to do it. So make sure you have four spacers and that the field is balanced on each side of those spacers is my uh, little advice to you. The next thing is putting these wires and getting all these wires like in there so they're not touching anything because there's no real place for them to get secured. Uh, it's kind of a hassle. Um, I definitely think that the Kirby's are a lot simpler to repair this time period uh, in terms of what's inside. So I've got the bearing plate. I've, um, I've pre-lubed some of the lube in here but we'll actually put a little bit more. I've put a little bit of grease, and that's just to make up for the metal on metal wear. That's not actually really to lubricate it on, like I said, on this side of the motor. So that, that's my little rant and kind of what happened with this. So if things look a little awkward when I'm editing this, um, that's why. So we're going to put this on and plate will just line up. Um, I also took and tried to clean off as much rust on the steel parts as possible. Um, Kind of just with a scotch brite and some steel wool and DW40. So that, that's what I've been able to do there. If you're wondering what happened or what was done there, that's, that's what I decided to do. Now putting this back together, we have a variety of screws. I must now choose which screws go where. And I must choose wisely, right? <laughs> um, luckily that's not as complex as the rest of the machine. That I actually understand where they go. And I'm going to put this stuff back together by a hand for the most part. I just don't uh, want to over torque anything, especially aluminum. Steel screws and aluminum is a real hassle. Make sure those are tight, precise. taking up the play in the shaft excellent that's what we want so now we're going to start putting our and you can see these wires are out on the side we're going to start putting our carbon brushes back in before i forget and damage something any more than i already have with this poor machine it's forever and these are antique so you can't just go order the parts that you need um, anymore unfortunately on this and this is going to be the same way we're going to just have to give that a little tap just to make sure that the covers go back on. Uh, again, you shouldn't have to do this when you put it back together if you do everything right. And that just doesn't feel like it's threaded on there, right? That could have been like that. So, I'm hoping all this is going to work when I get it back together. Uh, And you have these nice, awkward caps that go on here. 
and the, the, the correct way to put this cap on is a rubber mallet. Again, these are just for show. All right. Now we got the motor. Again, all this took way too fucking long to do. Uh, this machine has been a big, big time waster as far as I'm concerned compared to other machines that I've done in the past. Um, and you see, like I said, you see all sorts of extra things on my bench. It, it really gave me the frustration that I haven't, I haven't had that kind of frustration on a vacuum in a very long time. Now before we put the rest of this back together, I'm going to wipe down the parts the best I can. Just because there might still be some polishing compound, which aluminum kind of turns black. Also, the aluminum on this isn't very pure. I was really surprised compared to a Kirby. So you can see some of these dimples and things that are just not quite right. They're never going to be right, so I'm not really worried about it. Oh, other thing we're going to do before we put anything more back together is we're going to put this gasket on here. And you can see that the gasket is, it's been seeing better days, but again, they're not available, so it's still rubber, it's still going to work. But it's just something to keep in mind when you're doing one of these. I'll have to see if I can find one of those somewhere. Now there are three screws that are of this shape right here, and that's what you want to put in here. I love all the uh, screeching I often hear that, oh, this is the best vacuum, everybody should buy a Royal. Um, and there are no parts available. I don't see why you'd encourage anybody to buy something like that. I really like these machines, but again, they're, they're, they only really appeal to collectors and uh, maybe some other people who think aluminum is better than modern material some of the modern materials they're making vacuums out of it's amazing that this is how this goes all right that's on there that's one piece now i've cleaned this up the best i can before this goes together the thing i'm going to end up doing is sealing it up with some silicone let's make sure there's no yep so there's a little bit of schmutz on the end of the tube I'll wipe that off in the trash can this silicone two stuff is really good it, it it cures in about 45 minutes um you can handle it within like 20 minutes and it's it's tough. It doesn't like naturally erode as easily as some of the other stuff. So I'll put a link to the silicone uh, down below on Amazon. You can get it at Home Depot, of course, or someplace like that. But put this on. get a little bit of paper here and wipe off the excess when those tubes get empty they get a little harder to apply there's some excess put that on
And let's put the screws in. I do feel like these screws are a little easier to identify than the general Kirby screws when you're putting this back together. So, it, it has that going for it. Torque that down. tight as they need to be. Excellent. Throw that away. All right. If you see me coming in and out of frame of the camera, so I'm having to go grab things like paper towels. Just want to make sure there's none of that silicone on the outside of the machine. A little bit down here. And we've got a lot of it down over on the bottom. And this is really just a cosmetic thing. If you were doing like a hundred of these for refurb, I suppose you wouldn't do this. But I, again, I think it's just a nice touch to make sure there's no extra silicone on here. I'll also do the same on the inside and just make sure the gaskets there's a little bit of excess on the on the top. So I'm just gonna just wipe that. And if you if you leave excess, what ends up happening is debris catches on it. It has this vacuums and it will it will eventually rip out some of it, sometimes in a whole chunk. So that that's that's the only reason I'm again I'm wiping it down. It's there we go. All right, so that looks starting to look like a royal again. Let's put that to the side for a second. Let's talk about the other pieces that need to go back on. Now this is quite beat up. I'm actually going to go buff this real quick. Buff, I actually took a wire wheel to it, but that, that's just what I'm doing with that. Now before we put the rest of this back together, we have to put the fan on. And one thing I like to do when I put the fans on are just a little bit of oil on the threads in case the fan ever has to come off again. That just makes life a lot easier. Just like a Kirby, these are kind of reverse threads. Um, now, unlike a Kirby, there's no place to put... Let me move, move this so you can see it. Um, there's no place to put a uh, Allen key in there, so unfortunately the, the best thing to do is to take a pair of vice grips and manhandle it a little bit. I don't, you don't want to be too rough, but... a little bit. Oh, forgot that was reverse threaded for a second. These are the worst pair of ice grips. They're absolutely horrible. They I bought them at like a it's one of the only cheap tools I have. I guess this is a good time to plug Patreon and say I need a new pair of ice grips. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Alright there we go. So Again, not, not so hard that you, you mash anything, just, just a little bit. So that's all ready to go back together in here. And we can see the rest of this. Put 
this back together here. We're gonna put the handle back together. Set that on there. And that's eccentric, that only goes kinda one way. Um, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put this guy back on. It's crazy to think they have these wing nuts on a vacuum. <laughs> that that was that was acceptable design to have this big wing nut just hanging off here. Um, and the the reason for that is it was considered toolless assembly at the time. This would come in a square box that actually was a lot smaller than most modern vacuum boxes. Um, sorry, I had I had a an alligator clip wired on there. I had to use it as a cheater for something else. It was just the first thing that was sitting around. So we are going to just wire these up like so. And I believe this would have originally had some sort of wire crimps on them, but over time, these Royals, they get serviced, new cords get put on them, all sorts of things would have happened. Uh, if the cus customer was smart, you know, they could have kept this going for a very long time. This being made in the U.S., you know this was quality and it was built to last. This is really one of the last Royals before they started going significantly downhill in quality. Um... And eventually, as we all know, Royal has now, in 2020, Royal no longer exists. Um, the name is owned by uh, TTI out of China, but they killed the name off. There was no marketability, no notability to the name, unfortunately, uh, to the modern public. All the people who remember this name are all no longer vacuuming for the most part. Um, I think there are a couple boomers maybe left around. Who would be familiar with the name but it's it's such a small market all right i'm just gonna shear off some of the excess uh, of this double insulation here and you want to you don't what you don't want to do is cut the wire with this this is a very sharp piece of sheet metal and it's kind of a testament to the design so I'm going to use the this extra double insulation piece to move the wire back into place and now we're going to just put these screws in and of course those screws are a different size they're not a Phillips number two they're a Phillips number one And as usual, anytime you're putting something like this back, uh, I'm going to put all the screws in before I fully torque them down. That kind of helps center things. And this piece of sheet metal, it when you put these screws in it, it forms to the shape of the vacuum. starting to look good. I'm going to quickly wipe down the outside with some 409. Again, because this was polished and there might be polishing compound before I forget. just want to clean that up. And you can see that that really looks pretty good right now. As good as I expect it to look for a 30-year-old machine. Something else. Oh. Oh. 
<laughs> that's to the nest. That's why that doesn't look familiar. So the royal bag, the logo's a little faded, but I did, I did give it a quick speed queen uh, wash, and I'm gonna put the the gasket here. If you can see me, I'm just wiping that down with pledge. That'll help preserve the gasket. I'm gonna put that on there. And next, uh, I'm just checking real quick. I'm gonna take it off real quick now. It's hanging on there. We're gonna just check this for leaks or holes. Yep. You can see where there's some holes leaking there. So when people think they can just get a HEPA bag and throw it on an old machine and everything's gonna be dandy, they are definitely misleading themselves. That So that's gonna leak a lot of dust out there. And that's part of the reason why I'm Take a look at that. So there's a couple of things you can do. If you've ever used a rubber patch for like a like a rafting boat or an air mattress, that's something you can do. If you don't have access to that, actually a little bit of duct tape and silicone is ghetto as that sounds. Uh, basically what you can do is you can make a patch with that. So and I can see, and you can see where it gets restricted there. All that airflow gets restricted going into this bag quite a bit. And that's why the, the newer assemblies are a lot better. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this yet. The other thing that was busted there, it came to me open like this. So I managed to order a new one of these. I know it's not the proper blue, but an adjusto right indicator definitely uh, kind of completes the look of the machine. Now you might be saying, where is the brush roller? Why haven't you talked about that? That brush roller is right here. And we're going to talk about that right now. It's in fantastic condition. And this brush roller is no longer available. You can still get, if it's a hex end cap, you can still get these brush rollers for some of these Royals, but really this one's been no longer available. And I can't tell you how many of these Royals I've seen. That's the end of their life because the brush roller wasn't available. And somebody posed a question on Reddit the other day. They asked if a brush roller was a wear item. And like, to me, I don't think about that, even think about that twice. Of course a brush roller is a wear item. But I guess the average consumer might not know that. So yeah, brush rollers are a wear item. And these brush rollers have these felt gaskets. It's perfect. Nothing's bad in there. That, looks, that all looks good. This brush roller looks great. You notice there's no ball bearings in this brush roller. So, as always, when we put it back together, we're going to give it some kosher love. A little bit of oil in there. Uh, we'll help things rotate better, and that, that'll take care of some noise as well. And the reason I'm pulling these end caps off uh, like this. There we go. There's always just a little bit of fuzz that you can't get off otherwise. So I'm just checking that, making sure there's no ex excess hair. And yeah, you can you can really see how this brush roller works. It's very, very simple. There's not much to it. It's so weird that that fell off. I've never had one of those fall come off before. I'm just going to give it a quick love tap there and put it back on. Again, we're just going to give it some oil, some kosher, some kosher lube. And that will make that spin and hopefully last a little bit longer. Luckily, this one's being retired to my collection, so it's really only going to vacuum my house upon occasion just for fun. And just like anything else that's rubber, when we put it back together, uh, a little bit of this goes a long way in terms of preserving it and making it not dry rot as much. Here where I am in the US, uh, dry rot's a huge problem. It's, I live in a drier climate. Um, if you're familiar with the words high desert. Now what's interesting is there are numbers to t for wear on here and you can see it's eccentric. If it will focus there. But there are no numbers on the outside of this. So when you put this together you have to pay attention to where the eccentric parts are. 
on there. All right. You can just hear how dinky that sounds. So again, I think that the Kirby's are higher quality for the most part uh, in comparison. Well, I guess there are ro numbers molded on the outside on the rubber. I didn't notice those. Excellent. Now let's get a belt and snap everything together. Um, I know it's been a long journey. This has been one of the hardest machines to fix just because, again, my boo-boos. Um, you can see the arrow on the brush roller. If it will focus, there we go. And then we can see the arrow on the base plate. So when you're doing this, we're gonna make sure those arrows are lined up. Now I'm gonna use a Kirby belt. I'll put a link to one of these below. I'll put a link to all the supplies for this machine below in the description, hopefully that will help you. I'm not going to change the adjustment setting on the brush roller. Everything looks fine, and I'll show you how to check that in just a second. Oh, excellent. So what you can do is take a pencil or pen, and you can just run it along there, and you can see that they're making contact, and you're making about a quarter inch of contact, and that's what you're looking for on a Royal and really most vacuums. I'm going to put this in the upright position. Now the adjuster right cap has a little cheater there that shows you how to put the belt on. So I'm going to do that. Before I do that, I want to mention you really should have the belt tool for this machine. If you're using one of these machines, I don't have it. It's not handy right now. So I'm going to use my finger. Most people might won't have the strength to do that. So make sure it looks like the picture. Looks like the picture. And before I put the cap on, I always just test it, make sure nothing's gonna pop off. That looks good. So we're gonna put the cap on and I'm gonna show you how to do use the adjusto right. Now some of these would have had a pedal, some of them have a knob for the adjustment. Uh, just kind of depends on your preference, but you're going to watch this as it adjust is adjusted right, you're going to see this get sucked in there. Now the machine's off. And that's how you use the adjusto right. Let's vacuum a little bit with this. Well, for a 30-year-old machine, that sure is working really well. Hey, I appreciate you folks sitting through, seeing my mistakes when I did this, and I appreciate all your continued support on Patreon and on the channel. If you like this video, please like. Even better, share. That helps us out a lot. And if this video helped us, helped you, consider joining our Patreon and have yourself a wonderful day.